you see at the bottom there is going to be on almost every slide. So if you want to jump in, I'll also put that in the chat for you. Um, but it's one that if you want to follow along, and it also offers some screenshots that Julie took. Thank you, Julie, for when she ran a little test run on Floop again this week. So it's super good. Make sure that hopefully that bitly works. I think I did it right. But we're talking about Floop today. Floop is, well, I'll let Julie kind of talk intro on Floop. But Julie, I'll just put it this way. Julie was the one that uh, told us, uh, well, hey, back up here further. I think last year, Julie, we saw you <laughs> using this on a learning walk live on campus. And it was like the most like mesmerizing thing we saw. We were so, like all of us walkers were so excited to use it. And then... Julie and I have been kind of talking about it this year, but I'm trying to actually get a purchase license for it. We couldn't, but then Floop came out with um, 10 free assignments for teachers that you can use and recycle through. So we just said, this is gonna be a great time for PD. So uh, we appreciate you coming. Julie, why don't you talk about a little bit before we start, like why Floop has been awesome for you? Uh well, not to throw you a curveball. We didn't plan this, by the way. I just. Was... Oh gosh, uh, I think mm, if you go through some of those an annoying things in your slide, uh, or I should say, annoyances for teachers, um, that those are probably some of the things that, like, drew me to this. It's it's kind of like a video game. It's a little bit like a video game, and and like it runs, and mm -hmm. then you know, and they're doing their thing and they're seeing how many they, their reviews they're doing and how many they're getting. And then when it's, when you stop it, they all like scramble to see like what everybody said about the, what they wrote. It's crazy. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to kind of get started today with a quick little exercise activity just to remember why, what are our pitfalls of peer review? I know that I've run peer, peer review. Many of you have done peer review and maybe you've fallen through these situations. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is, I mean, we're gonna give you, I call this the peer review nightmare. Um, <laughs> use the raised hand feature, if you can for me, please. Um, if you ever experience the following when it comes to peer review, when you've instituted peer review in your class. So number one, students leave a few words or a sentence only in their peer review. Boom, see, easy enough. A lot of, <laughs> excellent. We'll do the next one. Students don't use the rubric that you've provided for peer review. I'm, I'm raising my hand on this too. Very good, most of you, there you go, see? All right, next. Their review doesn't truly reflect the quality of the work they reviewed. There's a positive review for a paper, that, for example, that needs a lot, a lot of love and work. But they say, it's great. Yes, excellent. Getting students to make changes. How uh, this is the struggle to get students to make changes to their draft based on their peer review. Do you have a struggle to get students to make those changes if there was peer review on there? Is there a struggle there to get them to change it? It's good. So is there one more? Yeah, last one. Sorry, I'm going quick. I didn't mean to. I just forgot if there was one more. Last one is students struggle to review even one paper or project. You were hoping to do them to do a couple and they could only get through one or barely get through one or not even get through one. Even though you laid it all out. Excellent. Julie, we have a lot of people who <laughs> us so this is why I like this <laughs> so Floop you guys and what we love about Floop and what we're excited to share about Floop is that this may be able this program may be able to improve the way students peer review each other and I should also add improve the way us educators can offer feedback as well to push our students to make changes and to master whatever uh, skill you want them to master. So that is what we hope Fluke will be able to do for you as we've seen some good stuff from it. All right, and I think this is also me, Julie, so I'll go over quickly just today what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna talk about the background on peer review and why it's so important. Um, 
That's a big one. We're going to talk about how Flute can help give you some of the basic overviews. We're going to do a demonstration where you guys act as students for Flute. And then we'll give you time to mess around with Flute yourself and do some work and maybe set up an assignment and brainstorm, plan out maybe a lesson you could do utilizing Flute in your classroom if it seems like it's something you really want to go after. And we think you will. So, all right. First point. Go ahead, Julie. All right. So, um, yeah, it's probably maybe obvious to you now, um, or if not from before, um, that is important to for students to um, peer review. One, one of the things that I think happens when students review, um, do peer review, is that it's um, it kind of takes them to a new level in their in their knowledge of the topic. Um, you know, you can learn the material and you can start to say, well, what the why and the how and, and all that. But when you can, in, in essence, um, use a, a critical eye to um, analyze someone else's work through the lens of certain criteria, um, it really helps them, I believe, to solidify their understanding of the um, of what we as teachers are trying to get them to learn. So, and that's um, like we had have said before, it's because they can upload a document or take a picture of something. Um, and there's like a whole bunch of math possibilities now too, to put in equations and all that. Really, um, there's like the sky's the limit um, for as far as the subjects um, that can use this tool. I think that's, it for that one, yeah. Um, so, um, and I'm in the process of, of um, I'm morphing <laughs> through this um, as well, but um, we want, I, I feel like the big picture is that we want students to become more proficient. We want them to um, move along. It's not just um, point A and point B. There's a whole, we know our students learn things at different paces. Um, at, in, in, to, um, at different depths. Um, and we, we wanna see them growing towards proficiency. They're not all the same. They're not gonna all be at point B at the same time, but we wanna see growth. And so um, feedback is really um, so much more valuable than the letter grade because once they receive their grade, there's no like motivation necessarily to do anything more with it. So, um, this is uh, th this is something that I um, have heard from from Yo and um, also Nicole Dimich um, in one of her presentations, um, and this kind of blew me away. And I actually emailed her and I said, "Where? What's your source for this? This is so fascinating." So. Um, there was a study done in 1988 um, by Ruth Butler. It's called the Butler Study, um, and she published um, she published her study in the British Journal of Psychology. And um, the name of her article is "Enhancing and Undermining Intrinsic Motivation: The Effects of Task Involving and Ego Involving Evaluation on Interest and Performance." That's a really long title. Um, but what the study showed was that um, students uh, that got grades only made no improvement. Students that got that got grades and comments got no improvement. It was only the the students that received comments only that improved um, their achievement. And I that that really blew me away. Um, I think that when they only get feedback and there's an expectation that I'm not going to assess this until you um, you meet the objective, until you meet the criteria, like you're going to keep working on this because we want we want proficiency. There, then there's motivation. Once you attach a grade to it, it kind of seals the deal, and then they're done. So uh, I love this. I like I have the PDF of this study. Um, that I got from from Nicole. If anybody wants it, I can email it to you. I'm done. 
I think oh, you're doing no, this. No, I'm not yeah. done. I just have a new slide. Okay. So, <laughs> so see you guys. Um, uh, so here are some of the basic uh, features of Floop. Um, so in Floop, students get feedback from other students and they all also get feedback from teachers. And that's fun too, because when they're reading their, their stuff, then you know you have your um, opportunity to put things, uh, put ideas in there too, um, in different form in formats. You can you can actually do audio, um, free form, and yeah, and mostly they'll see a little dot on there, and then they click on the dot and it shows the comment or whatever. So, and yes, we've um, already talked about this too. Um, sorry. We also talked about this too, that they can upload um, all different types of documents, um, including pictures. And that and that's important for a bunch of different subject areas, not just, that's why we liked it, not just for English, but in math, students can draw or show their work, upload a PDF of their work and have that um, as well. So, and then I was thinking for social studies, um, you know, if we've had them make something like a poster or something like that, that would be. Um, cool way to review it and make sure they have the content. Yeah, and even PE, right? I mean, I feel like they could probably, can they upload a video? That's something we haven't tried. And that's something we can look at is video yeah. uploads as well, peer review video uploads. I'm sure, I can't, I'm sure they do, but I'm not gonna guarantee it, but I'm sure they do. Or even like a picture, if they're supposed to do, you know, something with the steps of something in PE or whatever, I don't know. So yeah. I think like, you're kind of just limited by your lack of creativity and, and all that, so. Um, and then, um, so when you run a peer review, you um, have the students focus on one part of, uh, so that they're saying, they're, you're, you don't say to them, so take a look at this paper and give some feedback. You're gonna have them look at, you're gonna have them narrow in on one part that you really want to focus on. Okay, so you know, writing this paper, I want you to look at. Um, we're going to look at the thesis today, or you know, we're going to look at the um, the conjugation of the the past, you know, the past tense, and you know, so they're going to just look at one aspect of it, and so um, that's also going to help them to not feel overwhelmed. I think that sometimes when students do peer review, they don't know how to do it, and so you'll see. Um, how scaffolding this um, tool is for them so that they don't feel like, like, I don't know how to review this, like takes this, gives them all the steps and it really is um, very scaffolded for them. And I love this. Um, and I have a screenshot that shows this as well, but um, when students get their feedback, they take their document they look at the feedback, they make the changes based on the feedback that they've gotten, and they upload it to the same assignment again. And so you as a teacher can see version one, version two, and you can see um, the progress or not. <laughs> have they read their feedback and have they made changes based on that? Um, and so you can have it all in one place or right next to each other. So it's really easy and helpful to see their progress as they as they revise. All right, excellent. Yeah, so there, there's a lot even more than just this that you know Julie and I have slowly been discovering as we've been going through, and hopefully maybe you'll see some new stuff today that we could talk about. This is more of a training to give you the basics, but we hope you're creative and have fun with it as well. We are gonna jump now into doing checking it out, but we're gonna do it through the eyes of a student first. Now there's a couple key things that we gotta understand. Uh, with doing it as a student. Uh, first and foremost, I hope none of you jumped ahead because <laughs> unless, I know Brabant's here. Brabant was my guinea pig last week on this. Uh, to, to really sign up as a student, uh, we're gonna ask you to do this through a personal email account rather than your school one. Uh, we found that even after you delete the account, unless Brabant could say different, if he, he can go and check. Bra I had Brabant jump in as a school, as a student, we're using a school account and you couldn't switch over, it was a struggle. So we don't want that for you. So we're gonna have you guys go ahead on your personal email accounts. You're gonna go to floopedu.com, floopedu.com, sign in using a personal account and sign in as a student. 
And then we'll ask you some brief questions about your profile, make it quick, make it easy. And I'm just gonna put up all the instructions right here for you. And then it's gonna ask you to join a class. Here's your enroll code on the screen for the class that I created as a teacher. Um, and you'll see once you enroll an assignment there called test assignment, and that's where I'd want you to upload that Google doc you have um, that, or whatever document you wanna upload and just, we ask, don't put your name on it. One of the great things about Floop is the anonymity that can come with it. <clears throat> One of the things that I know a lot of students in my class especially have struggled with when it came to peer review is they knew who they were peer reviewing and they were afraid of being too critical. Or, Brian, can I just interject really quickly? Yeah. If, if When you're signing up, try to avoid signing up with Google because I'm okay. signing in now as a student and I tried to click on Go sign up with Google for my personal Gmail and it said you're already signed up as a teacher so um, maybe you know type it in at the bottom and put in a password that'll, for your probably, yeah try that out I didn't have an issue with that before because I'm signed in as a student on my personal that's interesting did so, you do student first or teacher uh, teacher first oh interesting yeah when I signed up last year for this so <laughs> But anyway, uh, so yeah, try, try it out with just a personal account. Um, let me show you the dashboard for teachers here and show you kind of what it looks like. Let me uh, try to go back to the beginning here though. So here is what a dashboard of your teacher side would look like. Um, so I would see my, I have my classes. This is my class from last year. Um, I think the students are all out. Yeah, they ended up getting kicked out somewhat, somehow, some way. So this is from my last year's class. Um, but here is my test class. This is you, my test, my test guinea pig class. And I would be able to see students coming in. See, here's my student account that I had added. Um, as you guys enroll, you'll be able to see that as well. So let me get back to the enroll code. I just want to show you that real quick. Here's the enroll code again. We'll give you guys a few minutes to get uploaded and jump it in where we're on a peer review. It does say that you can upload image or PDF, so probably not a video. Come on, bloop, step up. Maybe that's the uh, advanced. Uh, yeah, maybe. When you, when you pay. So they do have a pay option uh, where you don't have to be limited by the amount of assignments you do. They, their, their cap is 10. Did find that if you do, if you say you created 10 assignments, did 10 peer reviews, all you really need to do, I know it could be a bummer, but delete one, kind of like what we do, used to do with Padlet, you'd have to delete one to have a new one. But I felt like 10 was pretty good overall in terms of that. and. If this becomes something that's super desirable, there is a process to the district where we could get a subscription uh, full time, um, but uh, it has to go through committees and processes and all that stuff that would take a little bit. So, let me go and see how we're doing. Let me guys know if we have any questions. But I see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people in. Awesome. If you're having trouble, let me know. And then let me know if you're having trouble uploading documents as well. I got Jody. Look like she got her document. Thank you, Jody. I see that. I see, Katie's just popped in too. Perfect. So I'll show you what it see it shows right here on my end as a teacher. I think everyone's basically enrolled, so we're good. Uh, but as a as a teacher. I see this on my my end as a teacher. So when I am in like my main dashboard page, I can see the number right here of how many have turned in the assignment. So test assignment, I called it. If I click on that, I could get details of who turned it in and it updates. Now I see that Mr. Lee has got his in, Julie's got her in, Susteri's got her, and it just updates constantly and I can see who's turned it in and who is not uh, pretty quickly. So it's a pretty nice, easy way to just to check.
Brian, where's the document? The document? You just create one yourself. Okay. So All upload right. anything. I don't, you could be like your random, like, writing piece for the matter. That's just more just for anything. If you want to upload something from Google, your drive, that's a random piece of paper. Throw it All in right. There. And I tell students not to put their name on the document. Um, I know whose is whose because when they upload it, it's attached to their name. But it's important when for them to not put their name on the document. Um, so then they don't know who's they're reviewing. They're just reviewing some random person. Yeah. And as we're saying, anonymity has seemed to be very key and important in this. It's uh, at least for my end, it's always been like I will only up. I, I'm going to only make nice comments because this is my friend, you know, or um, I'm not going to be that have that critical eye. Yes, Katie. Um, so we would we when we have the kids sign up for it, though, we uh, we would probably have them sign up for it through their their Google account. Yes, uh, you want them to sign up through their Google account. And the reason again, the reason why we did personal is because we were having trouble uh, deleting, if you sign up as a student, deleting that student one and then signing in as a teacher. Um, I don't know if Brayband's here or not. Brayband, are you here? Have you tried? Oh, what's your question, Katie? <laughs> I, I have, my second question is, oh, sorry, sorry. Katie. <laughs> it is okay. My second question is, so, um, so my, mine, I turned it into a PDF and then I, and then I uploaded it, but I feel like I don't want to teach them how to make PDFs if I can avoid it. So can, if it's their Google account, can't they just, they can use the Google drive, right? We just tell them like, don't in the title, nowhere in the title, nowhere on the doc, would they put their name? Correct. And okay. even if it's something they uploaded on Google classroom, pretty sure they could delete their name off the title if it happened to be on there. Um, so Brian, I don't think it's- can you, can you click on view all work? Yes. To see the work that um, has been turned in. So here's some of the work that's been turned in. So you could all, view all work shows you um, a nice screenshot document of the work that's in here. Some of it's not loading though. So let me refresh. You should be able to get an image oh, yeah. right there. There we go. That's better. So Brabant, real quick, were you able to try to get back in as a teacher? So what I ended up having to do was I had to actually email support and they had to reset my account. Mm -hmm. It took about a day. Okay, so. cool. But at least that we're, there's a solution if necessary. Yeah. So that's good. And, um, and Cassie has a question, Cassie. Um, yes, it's along the same lines as the upload um, with the PDF. So what I did was when I went in, I just clicked um, on my drive. But the weird thing was I signed up with another Gmail, but it took me back to my school Gmail because what I opened was whatever came up. It was like it just took me to my recent. So I uploaded a student's copy of a doc that I had recently graded like because I just looked at it. But my question is, I didn't see any like way there was like a search for a document so it either has to be in their recents it looks like it either has to be in their recents or they have to know the name of the doc that they're looking for um especially if it, it's like attached to classroom yeah and what my question about that is like because like when they're in their google drive and they upload something from google drive like let's say i don't know they're going to upload a picture from their google drive onto a google doc there's a spot where they can click recents. There's a spot where they can click their Google Drive and look at all their folders. It wasn't giving me that option. And I was just, uh, maybe it's an observation. I don't know. Um, well, that's, that's good to it, know. That's good to know. But it just, yeah, because it's not like you can have them work on something three days ago and then have that pop up then mm -hmm. because they might have worked on 10 other docs in that exactly. time frame. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know if there's exactly. something I was missing. Yeah. So they can type in the, the title. So if you if it's a, if it's a particular assignment, they should all, especially if you create on, in an assignment, uh, uh, something where everyone has their own copy of it, um, then uh, it'll be entitled the same thing. And then they can just type in the title of the document that they're looking for and it'll come up. Um, hey. The other thing I could say on that is if you are using, say, Google Classroom for your main source where you attach documents, if you're, again, if your students go into Classroom and hit that document and open it up, whether they turned it in or not, that will go into their recents then because that will be the most recent document they looked at. So 
that's how I've done it. Um, and that I've, I haven't, uh, that was more just cause that's what I do. And so my students, when they've ran Ploop, they've just, it's right in their recents cause I had them open it ahead of time to make sure, Hey, is your name off of it? Um, is it out of the title? And then they went to, when they went to upload in recents, they know that, but it's just good to note that there is not easy to find. So we just have to be, we have to kind of brainstorm ways on that. So thank you for sharing that Cassie. That's good to know. Jennifer. Hello. Um, so mm -hmm. I noticed, cause I also signed in with a, a different email account. And when I set up load from Google drive, it asked me which one of my accounts I wanted to open. Okay. Yeah. So are you, are you going to upload from whatever your personal account or whatever? It didn't mess it up for me. Well, because it okay. took it, something up that I assigned to the kids today, and mm -hmm. I did, I just deleted a bunch of stuff and and plopped it in there. Okay. But it was in my in my school Gmail. I mean, my school Google. Uh, school. <laughs> that works. <laughs> my school <Google> Drive. <laughs> okay. Um, so because so like the, the other thing was when I tried to do the PDF of it. I couldn't find it on the computer. I kept searching everywhere. I was like, recents, where is it? I don't know. I give up. Okay. <laughs> so that's good to know. We'll have to kind of generate some tips and tricks for students then probably on how to find their documents easily. Um, so that, that would be something. It's good to know that. All right. I see that everyone's come in though. We got the document, except for me. Um, I, cause I have to sign out and resign in and I'm not going to do that. So, Let's see, you may have some students who are just like that. Hey, they didn't submit anything, whatever. So now you guys, we're going to do the peer review process. There's a couple ways to do that in detail or in submissions, or you could do it straight from the, the page itself Run peer review. Um, mostly though, you could do it. If you click on it to watch people turn stuff in, you can do peer review here and you'll have this button as a teacher. You'll say run peer review. You click it and it says make sure all of your students have submitted their work then double check your feedback focus feedback focus is the, what julie was talking about earlier is what do you want your students to really focus on I, I, i'm going from experience and why i make mistakes on peer review this is my biggest mistake especially with my english class i had with my point to english class i want them to grade on the rubric and that could be overwhelming to make sure they got everything on the rubric Instead, what we should be doing, and this is what Floop helps us, is really narrow it down. So, for example, instead of that, I would say, look at the, or evaluate the thesis statement. Is it making a powerful claim? Something, I don't know, something along those lines. You write your feedback focus out. Maybe it's a thesis statement, evaluating it. Maybe it's Grammar and spelling, very simple. Maybe it's something else. This is what you're looking for. Uh, Julie, is there anything I should add on the feedback focus before I hit submit? No, but when while you're doing going through the peer review, um, kind of go back back and forth and kind of take a look at Brian's screen as well because you're um, he. It's <clears throat> it's interesting to see uh, what flashes up on the screen for the students to keep track of who's received feedback and who's given feedback and all that. So just just um, be aware that there's something interesting to look at on his screen, even while we're doing the peer review. Yeah, so I'll have the teacher view up and then you can, while you are doing that as well, yeah, feel free to go back and forth. So once you have the feedback focus, you've made sure everyone turns it in, that's the big key things there. Um, then you hit run peer review. And there's an active peer review I see here and I could see now everything I, on my screen, it says it's active and all of you guys are in a peer review. You should have another person's paper. So we, you click on the pink button that says enter peer review. Oh, enter peer review. There you go. Yeah. And then you can see obviously on the side what the focus is at the top and then you have to click. I don't agree yet. I somewhat agree or I completely agree. And then, um, in the first box, you have to type what you see that supports your opinion that you agree, somewhat agree, or don't agree, um, or don't agree yet. And then, yeah. Awesome. And on my end, I just want to show you this real quick before you guys dive into it. Um, on my end, this is what the teacher dashboard looks like now. Instead of run peer review, you see monitor peer review. Now, if I click on monitor peer review, 
I will start seeing under feedback given and feedback received, these little dots start coming up that say, well, uh, to, based on the color, did they meet the exceed the criteria, somewhat get close or not even close at all? I believe are the, I'm, I'm using the general slang of what they say. And so I will be able to see that Ms. Alvarez is giving feedback. She hasn't received any on her paper, but I can see that she's giving feedback. This is important. So if you know a student is not doing what they should be doing, they're not giving their peer review, you can monitor to see how they're actually making comments and giving that feedback that they need to give what they've been assigned to do. So again, another issue on my end has always been students like kind of hide off and don't say anything. And then at the very end, they'll write something at the bottom to make sure they get credit for peer reviewing. This kind of takes that away. So I see that Julia is given feedback, which is great. And I see that Jose has received feedback on my end. So you can see that, but on your end, Again, if it's anonymous and you do it right, we don't know who's do, you know, peer reviewing what in that sense. And so there you go. And then once you peer review, I believe, you, Julie, you can answer this. Once they're done peer reviewing, they get another paper, right? Oh, yeah. It automatically pops up. It automatically pops up another person's paper on their own. And you just keep doing the process until the teacher says stop. So I'll give you a minute to mess around a little bit. And then we'll, we'll stop it. Just wanted to have you have a have a look at what students see here. So again, if you see my screen and my teacher screen, I can see again who's given a lot of feedback and each dot represents a paper that they've looked at and how many people have received. Like I can go, hey, Mr. Arieno, you're not stepping up in the feedback department there. Shame, shame, shame. Let's go. <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> I, need, I need some more minutes. Two more minutes. Okay. Two more minutes. Two more minutes then. That's it. Time reset. But uh, <laughs> again, it, it's a cool way to actually see that stuff is being written and received and so on and so forth. So let me give you like 30 more seconds to wrap up wherever you're at. I'm going to stop the peer review. And, and something then, interesting too about the, you know, as a teacher seeing the feedback received, uh, are there, are there students disagreeing? Um, are, is there a trend? Um, so it can help you kind of home in maybe on like, do I need to look at this more closely because people are disagreeing or um, nobody seems to be liking this one. Like what's up, what's up with this kid, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, for example, if you see a red and a green next to each other, that should raise some red flag. That should raise some flags for you. Be like, Oh, interesting. Who is disagreeing here and why are they disagreeing? Which is again, another cool, a uh, way to gather data and to think about what students are saying. Good. I, I, thank you for sharing that, Julie. That's a good one. I like that. And also, you know, because I even noticed on Friday when I did a trial run that some of the students weren't, uh, even though it was super thrown together, um, like, 
you know, there, the student doesn't have a great understanding of the criteria themselves. And so it is hard for them to give that, give accurate feedback. So then that's a little red flag for me, it's like this student needs some reteaching or this student needs some more practice. And so even on that, even for the reviewer, that can help us as teachers to know who needs more help. All right, I can say that Jose made a uh, feedback. Good job. <laughs> I'm gonna hit stop yeah, here. I did that as well. Hey, I'm gonna hit stop. Oops. So here's what happens when we stop it, and then you can see what you see on your end. So, so Brian, I hit, yeah, go ahead. You, so do the colored dots represent us? We're the different colored dots, so you can see how or no? No. That, so dots? that's so it's anonymous here in this regard. So the colored dots actually show what you graded them or what on your peer review. So you said if green means, hey, someone like Jose gave someone a green saying it's completely good. He received a red, a yellow and a red, probably signifying his paper needs a lot more work. Um, or nobody so, can understand it because it's in Spanish. It's in Spanish. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I've ended the, I, oh, go ahead, Jen. Oh. I'm just wondering the colors. Is that I completely agreed? I didn't agree. I mean, I don't know where the so it's complete. Like your opinion, did they completely meet criteria? Is green, yellow is they somewhat. They're close. They almost got there. And red is no. They're not there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so it's based you know on the little button that you pushed at the beginning. You know, as a reviewer. Right, but I think I mean I didn't. I know you started to type up like a, a how did their title sentence or whatever, um, but what I saw was, do you agree with? Is Got that it. what? Yeah, the three the three little square buttons at the top. I completely agree with the with okay. the. Okay, so that's where the colors are coming from. That's where the colors are coming from. Yep. So again, that that helps with the feedback focus. Like you got to make sure. You're making a statement such as, and I didn't do this as well, but like the thesis um, makes a clear claim or a clear argument um, or whatever. You just say that. And then students will say, I agree, somewhat agree, don't agree. So that that's a, a feedback focus that we that we gotta be careful with. So do you now, guys want to see your, feed, oh, ahead, your feedback? Do you guys want to see your peer feedback? Did you figure out how to do it? So if you go yeah. into the you, you, are you seeing it? Um, if you sit on the very, um, the very right hand side, um, there are there's um, B1, which is version one, um, conversation threads, and then the bottom one is the little people. So if you click on pe the people, it shows you what your peer, your peer review feedback is without names. Anonymity is awesome. Hey Brian, I see yes, that I, I see that uh, other teachers made more than one comment. Can you do that? Because I only got one uh, one document and submitted so, like three or four comments. Oh, interesting, Julie. Do you have more? What do you Wait, think on you, that? I'm sorry. Can you, as a as a student, you only received one person's feedback? Is that what you're saying? It looks yes, like you got. I, one document to to comment on all oh, right uh that's because the time ran out um, like i yeah, ended the peer, i ended the peer review uh since after you, that since one you took a, since your since your review was so more so much more thoughtful and you took more time to do it then you only had an opportunity to do one before the time ran out oh i see i see yeah okay thank you very nice pieces of feedback yeah <laughs> Hey, Mario, before you go, are you going to the SWIP meeting? Yeah. Just let them know we'll be late. Yeah, okay. both of us. Thanks. <laughs> Definitely. And thank you for this. Like, I can kind of see uh, some of the value behind like that, that you know, written part of it, just kind of simple reflection. Yep. Yeah. So I appreciate thank it. Thanks for You're being welcome. here. Thank you. See you, right, we'll see you guys. Bye. 
So yeah, you can see the feedback, as Julie said, and again, you know, students may take their time offering really good critical feedback, and that's great. And they only get to one paper, that's okay. But if students uh, are done and they automatically get another one, can you, think, you um, show them what a teacher what what it what it looks like when you click on one and give teacher feedback? Oh, okay, so that would be on view all work, right? Mm -hmm. I gotta remember this part. So, like, if I were to go on here and click on a document like Jose's here, and I could see his document, I could either, um, I can click on, it says here, click on the assignment where you wanna leave a comment, you could choose to save your comment in the comment bank or add a comment directly to the bank. So if I say, I wanna comment right here, I just click on the document itself. Right, in the, right in the spot, right in the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I will write, I love word maps. And you can save that comment to bank. So if you're using a general comment, like strong thesis here, I love that you made a claim. You don't want to keep writing that over and over. You can click save to bank. Um, these are where that. you can add uh, audio comments. So if I clicked on this instead and allow it to use my microphone, I could start talking about how great this word map is and looks really good and way, hey, way to go on this. So if you don't want to type, you could do that. That will save it there. You could also add free form. This is one I haven't used so much, Julia, free form, but. Yeah, so look at the top um, left. Oh, yeah. you, can, um, you can box something, put a box around something, put a circle around something. You can just write. That's the far left one if you want to do something free form. Yeah, like, great. Oh, I can see, I, I'm terrible <laughs> at that though. No, you get the idea. <laughs> So, and then once you write that out, whatever you're writing, mm -hmm. which is awesome, you just hit send. And also there's a place to make it different colors. So if you have something color coded, like if you wanna do green, yellow, red on some you know things to mark it, you can do that too. Um, so. so that's the comment make on this side here. This is where conversations could happen. And I believe this is where maybe Jose can go back in and ask a question, correct, Julie? I don't never, I might use this one. Can you try it? Can you do that, Jose? Look in there and see if you see a spot to uh, talk back to the teacher. He's and looking. you can see at the bottom that there's a spot to put a grade it and submit it, but you can yes. wait until you feel like they've met the criteria. Yeah. Uh, so I can also versions. This is where you could see the version up if they took your peer review, took the peer review or your feedback and updated. So you'd see version one and eventually you'd see two, three, four, so on. And then this where your peer feedback is where I can go in as a teacher and see the feedback from who gave them feedback and what did they say exactly. So that, uh, that way you can document and see that as well and see what caught. So this is great for ones that disagree with each other, especially. So if you have like a, hey, they met it and someone says they're not even close, you can go in and see what they say and the reasonings why. And maybe they're, you know, someone just didn't take it seriously on one end, or maybe they do have a genuine disagreement and that could uh, help you out. No worries. Thank you, Rhonda. Have a good one. Um, so that that's what you could use that for. And I love how there's a, I like to celebrate and I, and I like to suggest um, so that they can, you know, it's not like beating them, beating each other down. Um, they're looking for something positive to say about it as well. So I, and I love how the sentence starters really help them to be able to um, start to become more proficient as reviewers, as peer reviewers. Awesome. So I saw, I saw Jose responded. See, so here it is. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I really appreciate it. And then I could reply. It could be like a conversation on back and forth on some ideas, uh, which is pretty cool as well. And then yes, grades at the end. I can give a grade, hit submit, um, and that will just pop up in the Floop grade book. Um, I think, I've never, and again, I've not used this portion, but we could check it out. So if I hit like a B, submit, <laughs> update. And again, the idea is though, and I wanna reiterate, when we talk about peer review feedback, they do the best without the grade. And usually we see a, a jump in, in uh, like, them getting closer to meeting criteria. So we always probably want to hold off until they've met the, the standard or met or mastered whatever you're trying to get them to do. So, 
Any last questions, everybody? Hey, Brian, can you go back to the teacher page where you just where you, where you went from teacher page to going to Jose's work so that you could yeah. comment? Where's the, where's so the tab? I, so let me go back to the very beginning. So if you ever want to go back and look, you you click on your assignment, you go down to peer review, and you'll see all of these, and then you click on a specific student. So I click on Jose. Got you. And it's not loading. Come on. Come back. Come back to me. Let's go. Uh, you mean want to, to look at the work? I think you can... want to go back to what I did. So oh, view all work. I think it's, yeah, excuse me, I was wrong. It's view all work. That's where it was. So um view all work you'll see the tiles of all the pds or documents that they uploaded you just click on it and that's where you'll get to the comments okay so thank, thank you, you. For refreshing my when you go back to view all work um brian does it show his grade at the bottom uh, it says latest grade next to it B. oh yeah yeah okay so you can okay. see the latest grade on what you yeah. get <laughs> All right. Any other questions? But again, but, if we can hold off, you know, hold off on giving that grade until yeah, we feel like, you know, okay, well, they've at least I entered guess. the the realm. And you do get notifications for any comment that a student leaves you. You can see here, Jose is very excited for his B. I <laughs> want to push for a better grade, Jose, but there you go. I can see you there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, next time I write in English so I can get a beat down. I, mean, I keep that in mind. There you go. I love it. So that is from a student perspective, everybody. That is how it works. And, uh, you know, I hope you found that valuable to see what your students see along with seeing what I see on our end. Um, so in this regard, let me uh, go back to our PowerPoint real quick. Um, and we've ran the peer review. We want to give you some time if you if you need it uh, to actually kind of mess around as a teacher this time. So what you do is log out of your account, go back and re-sign in, but use your teacher student or your actual credentials, sign in as a teacher, and you'll be able to see how to create a class. It's all it's very similar to any other program you have, like creating a class will just say you'll just put in the info and it'll create a class for you give you an enroll code, very similar to Google Classroom that you would share with your students. And wanted to give you that opportunity to make your account. Now, again, I, I, I put up here very important, create a new account using your school credentials and make sure you sign in as a teacher so you don't have to message their support staff on that. Um, and we, I do wanna share a couple things to con consider as well. Um, just so you get practice and think about some things. You only get 10 assignments. So the good news is with those 10 assignments, it's not like 10 and you're done forever. If you get to that 10 lit max, you just go and delete one and then you can do a new assignment. And just, it's not the easiest, but I, I would say like with Padlets, people really wanna save their Padlets for future. This is a little different. You don't necessarily, it's really easy just to create a new one and have students upload a document. So it's not as cumbersome or to delete your assignments and then bring them back if necessary. Also recommend on practice with a simple assignment first, just so you get your get the students used to doing this process uh, before you get into like a big essay. And for you as well to practice on how to what to look for and things that you want to mess around with. Um, there's also Julie found this last week. Floop has some great frequently asked questions. Has a great FAQ page that walks through base with screenshots, everything that you'd want to know. I put a link there on that slide if you ever want to access it. And then Julie as well, um, thank you to her. She ran a test one last week and she took screenshots, what her students saw, what she saw. They're on this slideshow as well. I, I, I put them as a skip slide so we didn't go over it, but they're there for you if you want to. I, I took some screenshots of their Go Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> we were running it, so, um, okay. so you could see. But I mean, you guys all got to see from your own perspective. Um, I, I do have a, a question into Floop um, currently uh, because I I think I saw somewhere on there where the students could do a self reflection. But um, 
in the FAQ or somewhere around there. And so I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't see where to do that. And I think that that's also a very valuable thing for students to kind of do a self reflection. Um, and, um, yeah, to, awesome. to think on their own learning. So mm -hmm. I'll, Cassie, I'll, I'll update you. <laughs> Cassie, you have a question? Um, yes, you may have already answered it, but, um, is there a way, because you know how when you were creating the assignment and then you created the focus for them, like evaluate the thesis statement, is there a way if I did want them to use a rubric or I wanted them to use like certain evaluative criteria, is there a way to upload, I don't know, a rubric or like more things for them to look for? Great Or is question. it just like you're supposed to just give them like a little, which is a, not a bad thing because I mean, they, they do struggle with like multiple looking for multiple things at the same time. Exactly. Yes. I'm looking at the editing of this assignment that I created. There's no place to attach any documents or a rubric like you're saying. So I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's not available. So um, I think just that that's what would be with the feedback focus on that um, in terms of like rubric, what I have done and with it was, you know, I had, I posted on Google Classroom. I had I told them go Guardian. I want to see it open while you do this, and so that's what that's what I use. I kind of use this in conjunction with Google Classroom if I needed them to use anything in particular. So, um, but yeah, they don't have anything I see right off the bat that you can attach to, at least I in this version. Maybe something that you could do is um, if you are going to put this in Google Classroom as an assignment to. Um, attach the rubric to the assignment and then just uh, you can refer to it you know if you put in your criteria um, I want you to focus on the blah 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 part of the of the rubric and um, that's attached in your Google classroom so they can actually open it up it's they know where it is because you've attached it to the classroom um, assignment and then they can look at that if you if you need them to while they're reviewing thank you mm -hmm. All right, so we want to give you time to work. We, whether you're here, staying in this PD, or you want to do it on your own, do it later, totally fine. We're wrapped up, I think, Julie, unless you have anything to add, we're wrapped up on sharing kind of what we know about Floop. We, we said we'd be out of here well before 12.15. So um, yeah, are there any other questions you want to ask Julie or I re regarding Floop before we set you off? If you want to, I mean, Brian, if you want, want to just stop recording and people want to stay on here and keep working, yeah. we can we can open up both our both meetings. We have another meeting we need to get to, but we can totally keep this open and keep an eye.